All right, we're going to wait a couple minutes for people to come in, so hopefully they'll be in soon. So uh, we just wait a little while. Uh, let me try to put in um, our Slack. Okay. Um, so I, I hope. Uh, we have a, a quick uh, session today because I, I think most of us are just starting on our projects and um, maybe you haven't actually had a chance to talk with others yet, but uh, hopefully you, you can do that soon. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, we have on the, the project channel uh, a place for you to um, describe the projects that you're doing. Okay, so uh, you can see in the project channel. Okay, uh, as I've written there, um, we are going to have presentations uh, five to 10 minutes each uh, with a peer team. And uh, hopefully we have all the peer teams showing up, although uh, right now it doesn't look like we have uh, enough people yet. So uh, let's see, we have, People, I think uh, Joel and Guan Hao are from group 10. Um, Yi Song is from uh, the other group pairing with you. So that's good. So we have at least one pair. Uh, Taka has just come in. So he is the counterfactual record and search system. And then uh, we have uh, Shashank. Um, and uh, I don't see clearance, but I guess he's coming in as well um, for the second uh, group. So we have people representing the second pair of groups here. Okay, so, uh, and then group seven, I see uh, uh, Afrin, uh, Asuru Afrin, and um, yeah, you're here, great. And then um, Evan Chong, I don't think is here yet, so, um, that would be fine. Uh, if, if he does come, then we can have a, a third breakout room. If not, what we'll do is we'll pair group seven uh, with the diversifying dialogue generation with non-conversational text, because we have an odd number of uh, project groups who have de declared what their ideas are. Okay, so Evan is here as well. So that that's all good. So, um, so the way we're gonna do it is exactly that. You need to uh, go to the Slack uh, project uh, channel, and then uh, put a start a thread um, with your uh, project slides. You know, you can just put it right down here. Okay, uh, I think some of you have put it uh, individually in the thread too. It's a little harder to find that there, so I would ask that you uh, put a, a sample project thread out in the main projects channel. So, like uh, Joel um, and Yushi, you can put a version of that out on the main project channel um, so that other people can see. So that extends to the rest of you. So group, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so we have uh, group 10, which uh, Joel is typing out. Um, Yi Song and Chen Xing, if you can put a post on the, the main project thread, that would be great too. Okay, Taka, you can also put one for yourself. Uh, I think uh, we need one from um, uh, group five, uh, which is including Shoshank. And uh, for uh, group seven, uh, we also uh, need a thread. So you need to put uh, some here. So uh, Yisong has put one, Joel has put one. Okay, so you guys are, are ready to go. Um, but Taka and uh, group five, group seven, and uh, uh, the, uh, the the singleton group by Evan, uh, it would be good if you can put your slide decks out. Okay, if you don't have one, that's okay. Uh, but, but then uh, you need to at least start a thread, even if you don't have slides, so that uh, uh, we can uh, at least help to uh, consolidate all of your um, feedback on. 
Okay, so uh, I think we're pretty good. Yeah, so we have the last set. Uh, I think we're just missing uh, Takas and Evan. So if you guys have uh, versions up, okay, so Evan put his. So Taka, if you have slides, put them up, otherwise uh, we'll skip, okay? So like I said, this will be a pretty short session because uh, we'll just have these breakout rooms to discuss. After we do the breakout, uh, I will call time um, after about 15 minutes. So uh, I hope you can swap and, and present to each other. So I will do that through a message in the Zoom chat. And then after that, uh, we will all come back to the main breakout room and um, I can talk with teams individually or you can talk offline with me. Uh, either way, I will go through all of the slides that you guys have produced and, and give recommendations, either online uh, after the breakout rooms or offline after the Zoom session is ended. Okay, so with that, uh, I think we're ready to go. So um, let's see, I need to uh, do this properly. I need to allow you to choose your own room. Okay, yeah, okay. And um, yeah, okay, good. So uh, let participants choose their room. Okay, so now the rooms are open. So uh, you can uh, look at the post at the top. Okay, so the ones that are in group 10 and causal estimation, you go to breakout room one. Uh, room two is for Taka and then uh, group five. Uh, group seven and Evan are going to breakout room three. And group four, we're gonna use, uh, we're not gonna use, we'll just uh, keep you guys here. So Chi, Shun, uh, Yushi, and Tenzin, uh, you guys are here. Okay, so um, please go ahead and start and, and join. So um, it will be from uh, 110 as the start. And then we'll finish at uh, 25, okay? So, um, uh, Shi Chun, uh, uh, you can present. Uh, your yeah. Uh, my my group members currently, uh, both of them, they have uh, lessons all the way until uh, two, so they'll only be able to join at two if if this is still ongoing. Yeah. Uh, if 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 not, then uh, I'll, I'll just present on their behalf. Okay. Let me uh help assign the rest of our uh students out to their right to room. Sure. Then we'll get started. Peng Tai, you are going to room three. Uh, Chen Xin is going to room one. And Taka, you are going to room two. Okay, so great. So um, yeah, maybe you can uh, present your slides and uh, we can uh, discuss a little bit uh, for that. And then after that, if there are any other comments that you have, um, we can join another room instead. Is that all right with you? Uh, it sounds good. Okay. okay. Yep, prof in, uh, yeah. Let me, uh, prof in, I, can't, I can't share the screen. Uh, okay, let me uh, fix that. Let's see what I can do that. Enable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to stop my sharing. Okay, there you go. Can you share now? Uh, yes, I can. I'm just switch over to the slides. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll just uh, briefly go through. Um, Yep. So, uh, for for us, we are uh, working on this particular paper called uh, 
uh, diversifying uh, dialogue generation with non-conversational text. It's actually a paper done by uh, people, who, researchers who are uh, in Tencent. And uh, so uh, let, let me just uh, go through uh, what, uh, roughly what the paper is about. So uh, what the paper is trying to do uh, compared to the um, usual, uh, usual methods of uh, dialogue generation is that uh, the usual, the, the usual way of uh, generating dialogue only uh, makes, makes use of uh, conversational uh, text and uh, text corpus. But uh, in, uh, it suffers from uh, the problem of uh, low, di uh, low diversity, uh, meaning that uh, the words which are generated, the text which is generated, they are uh, all relatively similar and uh, it, it doesn't make for a very interesting read when uh, you, when when the text the dialogue is being generated. So uh, in order to uh, improve the diversity of the vocabulary, uh, they basically uh, what what the authors did was to use a uh, different uh, corpus which uh, is uh, non-conversational, and they use uh, actually books and uh, uh, poetry from from uh, many, many different places. They, they, uh, they, they basically uh, incorporated that uh, into, into the uh, dialogue generation to attempt to make uh, it more diverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that is the, that is like uh, the main point of the paper, which, uh, yeah. So, so what we intend to do in order to build on onto this uh, project is to uh, change this, uh, is to try and see if we can replicate this on a different kind of data set. So um, because they, uh, they have done, uh, basically uh, done, yeah, they have done their uh, work in, uh, on Chinese corpuses. So we are uh, attempting, to, uh, we are attempting to, uh, uh, replicate this uh, in English, and uh, and another thing is that uh, they used a very uh, very simple uh, kind of uh, mechanism, uh, a sequence to sequence model, uh, when when they uh, when they tried to uh, when they uh, basically uh, in this paper they use a very simple uh, sequence to sequence model as to to generate a baseline, but uh, what we uh, intend to do is to uh, uh, use a better, uh, more expressive sequence to sequence model to, to see if uh, that uh, further uh, improves uh, results. And uh, yep, so, so the, the another, another last con uh, contribution which uh, we wanted to uh, delve into uh, is whether uh, if the type of uh, non conversational uh, data set the type of non-conversational corpus that we are using, uh, will it affect results uh, of, of uh, the dialogue, dialogue generation? Like how, how diverse it, it will be uh, if we use uh, different data sets? Because uh, sometimes if we use a general uh, data set, then uh, there, there could be the possibility that uh, we, we might not be uh, having a very, uh, we, we might not be using the words which are uh, related for a particular domain. So we attempt to, uh, we will uh, try to attempt to filter out uh, this non-conversational corpus to according to the different topics which are in uh, the conversational uh, corpus and uh, see if that changes any results and, and possibly uh, analyze uh, what could be the reasons if, if we get uh, different results. Yep. So, uh, so we, we actually have already started to uh, uh, write a bit of code in order to, uh, to replicate this paper. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find a, a code base for uh, this particular paper. Uh, so uh, so uh, we, we, have, uh, we have just basically tried to replicate it from uh, based, uh, based on the uh, the details which are uh, which are uh, spoke of uh, in in the paper, mm -hmm. and, and so uh, 
Yeah, uh, we actually have the link here. I, I don't know if you want to. Uh, let me let me try and just. Uh, yeah, I'm on your slide, so I'll just open it from there. Oh, okay. Sounds sounds good. Okay. okay. So I'm looking at the GitHub. So all three of you are on the, the repo already as contributors, so that's great. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so so basically, uh, basically what we have implemented so far is the is the mainly the forward forward portion. We have processed we have processed the data sets which we have uh, we wanted to use. Which so, data sets uh, are you using at this point? We are using uh, the various data sets uh, in, in this particular readme. In, in, the, in the data folder, there is actually a readme and uh, we, we have done uh, some slight analysis on, on the data sets. Okay. Right, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so maybe first, uh, even though we process uh, this data to create the uh, JSON files already, but uh, we have only mainly been uh, touching on this particular data set, the conversational one, the daily dialogue portion, because uh, we we haven't gotten uh, that far in uh, at replicating the the code. So uh, we we have only uh, been uh, trying to do the in uh, initialization point of. Uh, let me uh, so based on uh, based on the the algorithm right uh, we are currently at this part when we are uh, trying to initialize the, the base model okay yes so that is uh, that is the rough uh, progress which which we have for uh, for this part. Yeah, but uh, maybe maybe uh, rather than talk about uh, the the current progress, maybe uh, uh, maybe I will try to uh, give you a flavor of what uh, what what we might want to do in the in the future. Uh, uh, what we want to implement in the future. So, uh, so uh, we have uh, we we intend to use uh, uh, this uh, but uh, but based uh, sequence to sequence model, which we have uh, already um, put at least the forward the the forward uh, portion, the forward implementation of of it. Because uh, uh, this this paper is based on uh, back translation. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we 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 have done the forward part uh, so far. Right. So that, that is the part. But uh, the backward parts we, we will be uh, implementing implementing it in the in the weeks to come. Then uh, oh yeah um and another thing is that uh how exactly are, were we going to filter the non conversational corpus uh in um, such that it will be useful in trying to enrich the uh, conversational uh, the, the, the model uh, we we would uh, we would be using a bird based uh, sentence uh, classification model so uh, what what this would do is that uh, we would first train this uh, bird model on we would first train this bird model on on this uh, on the main uh, data set on the conversational corpus, uh, which is uh, which is uh, in, in this case the daily dialogue data set, mm -hmm. and then uh, we would then try and classify the the non conversational corpus, uh, uh, and 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 basically uh, give give uh, add, add, add on the label of what what topic it is for uh, each. Uh, each of the non-conversational uh, uh, text samples. So then, uh, with these labels, we will then be able to filter and and then uh, 
get uh, particular corpuses which are based on uh, on topics which are in in the conversational uh, uh, which, which are in the conversational corpus so that so that uh, we can run the the exper the last experiment which we uh, which I previously uh, talked about yeah so uh, This, uh, so uh, main, mainly, uh, uh, when, uh, when looking at the uh, GitHub, uh, you, you could have already seen that uh, we we are using uh this particular uh corpus uh, uh this particular data sets with right. uh with with the the analysis the rough analysis which we have done, and uh yeah so so I probably won't uh really uh touch touch that yeah. much on, on, on this. Okay. Uh, but uh, with regards to the evaluation uh, matrix, uh, we are, uh, we intend to, yes, uh, we intend to uh, follow uh, follow roughly uh, what the uh, paper, papers uh, evaluation uh, matrix, uh, matrix are, which uh, uh, they have used uh, blue as well as uh, uh, diversity. So, uh, so in in terms of in terms of uh this this two uh for blue it is to ensure that we have uh easy comparison with with the uh yeah go ahead sorry I'm just writing yes yeah go ahead yeah so so uh blue is so that uh we are able to form a comparison between the with uh, between this our uh, this method versus the existing uh, uh methods uh, which are out there, and uh, blue blue is uh, this standard ev uh, evaluation uh, which which allows us to benchmark where exactly uh, our our model how our, how is it, how well our model is actually doing and mm -hmm. uh, in in terms in terms of in terms of uh in terms of diversity uh it is not that commonly used. Uh, but uh, we would like to evaluate to see uh, what is the difference between uh, this this particular metrics with with the compared to uh, what the authors have done with the Chinese uh, the performance on the Chinese corpus. So uh, yeah, that's that's the reason why we have used uh, diversity and and lastly for the human evaluation, uh, uh, we we intend to yeah uh, just just like you say, it's impossible for us to. To go through the entire data set, uh, which is why we would uh, probably be picking uh, a few a few samples uh, to 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 uh, for us to to evaluate on on all of this uh, criteria themselves. Yeah, I think uh, we can use human evaluation for finding interesting examples that you want to showcase uh, as uh, you know. Um, uh, an exhibit, just like in the paper um, that you're using, right? This, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, diversifying dialogue generation with non-conversational text, right? You want to show a, a couple uh, key uh, conversations where uh, you're getting some part of the generated response from another place, right? Like for example, in uh, table uh, five and six in the main paper, right? Uh, they do exactly that, yeah. Like, um, not table one, but uh, later on in the uh, in the paper, they have these parts where they they show some of the examples where some of the response is actually pulled out from uh, other parts, right? So um, that that is one of the things that you can do. Okay, so um, that that's very nice. Where the human evaluation helps you to uh, find. Uh, both good examples and bad examples of things that worked or didn't work, right? Okay, and then uh, because you have a number of different sources, it'd be it'd be good to also have some idea of um, which source is com contributing more for which dialogues, and to to look at it from the the point of view of um, you know, like say uh, perplexity or um, overlap of vocabulary with the particular um, with the particular uh, pieces of text that you're generating. So, for example, 
um, in, in one of the dialogues that uh, they have in table six, this person says, you know, they are um, getting fat or something, right? So then um, you can say a little bit about where, uh, where um, this, this inserted piece of novel text comes from. Does it come from uh, which data set? Does it come from your Twitter data set? Does it come from ELL5 or does it come from WikiHow? Okay, because I think actually these, these uh, you're going to have a hard time utilizing some of those data sets. Uh, like the Twitter data set, um, I don't know. It depends on, because your daily conversation, um, I don't know where it came from, but I'm guessing it's a, a automatically a speech recognized text or something like that. Um, in that case, it will look pretty different from Twitter and you may not get a lot of utility out of it. So uh, you may want to choose to generate the dialogues in such a way that it's more like um, some of the uh, data sets where you're trying to enrich from. You know what I mean? Uh, I have searched um, several data sets. Um, I think this is one of the problems that, uh, and also the in the daily dialogue um, data set, the, um, the data is in the form of multi terms. So, but but in this paper, um, I think it only has two terms or, or one term, I think. Yeah, so this is also the problem. Yeah, so you, you probably want to do quite a lot of filtering. Uh, like you said out at the front, you were going to filter out non conversational text, but uh, you want to try to filter your data set. Uh, so, uh, you know, to, to try to optimize the possibility, the likelihood, you know, not, in a, not in a mathematical sense, sort of like informally, so that the data set will have uh, a benefit to use the downstream information, right? So, um, you know, if you're trying to enrich with ELL, EL5, then maybe you need certain types of conversations. Like you said, that one is more like declarative question answering, right? Um, so uh, maybe it needs to be like a, a conversation and daily dialogue or empathetic dialogue that's more like question and answer style, okay, rather than, you know, just chit chat, right? Like the chit chat one, I would guess like the Twitter one might work a little better, okay? The wiki how is again like procedural data, right? Like uh, how can you do, uh, you know, crack an egg without getting the shell inside or how do you make a Caesar salad, right? So, um, you know, uh, I expect there will be some part of your conversational daily dialogue or empathetic dialogue that might have good um, relevance to, to this. So you may want to either upsample or uh, upweight. Uh, uh, things that are uh, more conducive to, to that type of dialogue. You know, you probably don't want to remove much of your conversational data sets, but rather um, make more prevalent the dialogues that seem to match your non-conversational data better. Okay. okay, okay. I'll just write that dialogues that match. Okay. Um, there you are. Oh, bro. Of me. So, yeah, does it mean that straight, straight away, right? Uh, we should already um be exercising the care, uh, like, like uh, in, in terms of even the very first like picking of which data set to use, it should already have been considered that uh, we, we need uh, something with uh, relative uh relatively from the same distribution as the daily dialogue and the uh, empathetic, uh, uh, empathetic dialogue data sets. So I mean, you can do it both ways. You can either constrain your base data set to upsample things uh, that are more like the non-conversational data, data, or you can do it the reverse, right? Like you were suggesting, uh, maybe I want to choose uh, non-conversational data sets in such a way that they overlap well with empathetic dialogue or daily dialogue, right? So for example, wiki how, like how, how can I make a nuclear reactor work? 
versus the wiki how question that says, um, what do you generally do in the mornings, right? Um, or how do you brush your teeth? Or how do you get, you know, your breath less stinky or things like that? Those might be more suitable than, you know, deep scientific questions because we don't expect those types of questions to come up in your empathetic dialogue or your daily dialogue, right? So it's uh, mm -hmm. more like you want to uh, lower the impedance or the resistance between uh, your two domains, right? You're basically saying, I want to share vocabulary. I want to share phrases to, uh, you know, uh, increase the diversity and reduce the problem with um, uh, uh, these other parts, right? Does that make sense? Uh, yes. yes, yes, it does. Okay. So um, I think the other groups can go ahead and switch, but since you guys are the only group talking to me, then that's fine, we can continue for a while. Okay, and you're also the group that needs to finish the earliest because I think most of you are, are in the, the first half of 6101. So you guys need to have a, a finished project fairly soon. So maybe we can go um, forward a little bit and, and think about, I'm glad you got your data sets uh, process. I'm, I'm heartened that uh, you guys have contributed all three of you to uh, a code base. And um, can I just understand, this is a replication of their work or did they have code that uh, was already publicly available that you forked? Uh, actually, they do not public their, 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 war, the, their, their code. So we just adapt the transformers that code from Hugging Face to uh -huh. use our model, yeah. Okay. But then you, you have no very strong guarantee that it's going to work uh, as uh, described, right? So um, yes, yeah, yeah. You, you need to uh, allocate some time for debugging and, and fixing because it's, you know, like you, you already know, many of these papers, when you try out the model, it looks very nice on paper. It doesn't work at all when you execute it. So um, yes, there are right. going to be problems. Uh, again, I would uh, suggest that you use a, a very small transformer model so that uh, uh, unless you have a, a lot of pre-training, okay, uh, because uh, you, you want to be able to finish your project within uh, a set amount of time, right? Um, actually, I think the running time for model training is just about uh, one or two hours. Yeah, we use the fast large and try training and the forward model, and it only takes um, about an hour. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it may not take much time. Mm. Okay. The problem is that um, to make the, the model works, I think well, we haven't uh, incorporated the non-conversational data yet. So yes. yeah, so we will see whether it works. Okay, yeah. So it's good that you have a, a very structured way of dealing with this project. You've got the data sets. You're going to trans, um, you know, train the basic transformer model for uh, the the basic baseline, and then you'll have that right. And uh, you you probably need to have um, you know samples where you're using the same uh, procedural pipeline and maybe even the same a random initialization so that you can see the, the exact differences when you incorporate the non-conversational um, text, right? Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so that you have comparable uh, results. You know, this is what it looks like um, starting from the same in initial word, okay? Um, when I use a, uh, you know, the one that's basic and another one where I've included one, two, or three different sources of non-conversational text. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk about, uh, do you have other questions about the, the paper that you want to cover? So you did the forward part um, to do the training uh, for uh, the convergence. And you said that took like one or two hours, and that's good. And then uh, if you have the backward one, um, then you have to iterate, right? You have to go backward and forward together, right? Yeah, yes. So that's going to be quite a bit more expensive than one hour. You can expect that 
you have to do this iteration a number of times, right? Did they say how long that it's going to, uh, how many iterations they did of, of this framework where they had to go back and forth several uh, times? I think they have said that I forgot. I, I think maybe- uh, If I'm not wrong, it's, it is five, uh, five times, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna to try to look at the paper. I don't think they actually said. Oh yeah, they did. Um, on page 7,092 in the back translation part, right before results, um, they said we performed the iterative backward and forward translation four times for both data, data sets. And they observed a forward cross entropy loss uh, after four iterations already converges, right? So that's um, at the end of a section five on the next page. Yeah, right there. Okay, so you're right. Yeah, it didn't take long for them, but again, they're using a, a, a different model, right? They, they weren't using a transformer, were they? Were they using a transformer or just a, a LSTM? They, they use LSTM. Yeah, so the LSTM is, is having much less parameters, so I guess it stabilizes much faster. So there, there may be um, some ramifications of uh, using a transformer that's uh, highly parameterized compared to something like an LSTM, which is uh, much less complex. Yeah, um, because we, we are worried about the fluency of the language. We think if we just initialize a uh, uh, LSTM model and without pre-training, then maybe the fluency will be quite quite bad. So, so yeah, use the pre-trained model. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I, I'm glad you do that. Uh, just try to make uh, make sure that you don't have too much overfitting because then you're going to get very strange text out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you want to concentrate on using uh, a small pre-trained model because I think your corpora are not very large, right? I think on, on your page for your data set, uh, you, uh, I think you show that the, the data is not particularly large. Yeah, it's not that large. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think of tra training a transformer, you usually wouldn't train it with so little data, right? So um, that, that's something you have to watch out for. You know, you may get results, but because the larger problem of having little data uh, compared to the feature of using uh, non-conversational text, um, uh, may be overwhelmed by that problem. So I'm just a little concerned about that. Okay. So you may want to also have a um, a backup plan. Go go back to something simple like an LSTM um, to get it to work because at least that one is not going to be too many concerns about overparameterization. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even though it won't be fluent, at least you'll be able to tease out the effect of putting non-conversational text, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you use a transformer and everything you get is sort of like all over the place, right? You can't distinguish whether it's really due to the fact that you included non-conversational text, or is it just that the the model is is not is not doing very well? It's overfit. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I would say. Okay, so uh, looking at your schedule. Yeah, so you said uh, week five this week, which is uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, so you, you finished uh, most of the data processing at this point, right? Yes. Okay, so you're on target for that, right? Yes. Okay, so then uh, week six is really the crunch week for you guys because you have to finish most of the models and um, train the system. So uh, again, most, all of these models are pretty big. They're not small. So I, I'm a little worried that you're going to get a lot of noise in your results. So um, you know, you may want to have a, a backup consideration on that. Okay, so um, okay. I'll just comment there. Oh, I'll do it on Slack, yeah. Uh, let me go back to your slide deck. Yeah, so uh, think about week six. 
Uh, if if you are having enough team members, you can use one member. Use simple, that is, for example, LSTM or uh, by LSTM models instead of R and birth, all, you know, all your transformer models. And even if you use the transformer models, uh, try to use ones that are small. Okay. Okay. I think there is a first small we can use it. Okay. Yeah, because again, the whole point is you want proof of concept. You want to show that uh, actually this technique does work, but for um, you know specific dialogues. Like I was telling uh, uh, Chi earlier, um, we it's probably good to use your manual evaluation to focus on the specific sets of dialogues that you want to sample from a human point of view. So you can actually do this now. You can decide in your uh, daily dialogue and your um, empathetic dialogue. Okay. Which topics uh, are you going to sample? Okay. So if you have some idea based on um, what they said in their paper, uh, that would be helpful, right? So they, the, the two examples that they showed in, in page six are, are again, pretty simple. You know, one is about gaining weight. Another one is, I guess, having a crush or something, I guess, because that was some of the examples that they said um, in their response generation too, right? Okay, but because your dial your your enrichment sources are using other pieces of information, uh, you may consider it uh, a little differently. Okay. So, uh, have you guys looked at the dialogue samples that you have uh, in your data set? Yeah, we have checked. Uh, I think it's natural and. Uh, I I have said some uh, I have read some um, predict samples uh, on the that daily dialogue and I think the um, the quality is good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions that uh, you would like to get some feedback on? Um, I think the question is that uh, I'm not sure what's a deadline of our project. Um, uh, you actually have until week 13 to finish your project. Okay, but because you guys are all taking a lab rotation in the second half, that means you should consider <laughs> making sure you finish the bulk or if not all of the first version of your project by then, right? Because uh -huh. if your second lab rotation is very heavy or you do have, uh, you know, paper deadlines or you have a lot of uh, modules that you're taking, it's really imperative that uh, you don't have too many things outstanding. It's really bad when your lab rotation extends into your next lab rotation. So then you're basically taking two lab rotations at the same time, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. You don't want to do that. So um, while you may still want to attend the lectures, uh, if you're interested in conversational recommendation systems, that's fine, but you're not obligated to by any means, right? So. Um, you know, uh, you're, you're doing a conversational project, which is uh, perfectly suited for uh, what you're talking about here. Okay. And uh, just to make sure that you, you finished most of it. So I would say um, by week eight. Okay. So that's uh, already the start of your second lab rotation, right? You should have finished your report. Okay. Um, to a point where you're okay with what you've done. You're not like, there's lots of other things you could do, but uh, because of, of the thing you decide it's, it's not appropriate, okay? Because okay. you have to work on the other projects. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Evan and uh, I think uh, the other group, was this group seven or group five? Uh, seven.
seven. Okay, you guys are all done. Okay, so uh, did you have a, a useful conversation at this point? Sorry, Prof. Didn't quite get you. Uh, did you have a useful conversation? Yeah, we had a great talk. Okay, great. So Evan, you're the singleton in, in your group. Are, are you comfortable with the amount of load for your project? Did the, the group seven give you uh, useful advice with respect to your uh, project load? Yeah, I think it's uh, okay. And uh, also kind of kept the scope small. So I think it's uh, okay for uh, this project, yeah. Yeah, uh, make it as small as you can feasibly do it so that uh, you can uh, manage to extend it if you need to. But it's, it's actually much better to make the project small and enlarge later. Okay. Um, do you, any of the groups have questions? So I, I, I've talked with um, uh, uh, Shichun and uh, Yushi uh, on their project. But uh, maybe I can hear from you guys. Do you have any questions from the first breakout meeting? So you guys are all good. Peng Tai? Oh yeah, I was just uh, saying there was no question from my side. Okay. Yeah. So what we'll do um, in the next round, um, okay, two weeks from now is check up on your progress, okay, you have your, your project slides that you share to the channel. I will make comments on them later, okay, since you guys don't have any immediate questions, it's not a good use of your time to just sit here and do nothing. Um, but the important part is uh, you'll be shuffled, okay, so you'll um, uh, look at a, another project group next time um, so that you'll get some feedback, okay. The group that I'm currently with, uh, Shi Chun and uh, Yushi, they're finishing their project by week eight, okay? So uh, we are going to use them as sort of like a, a showcase of how to get the project done. So your, your other groups, uh, you guys have a, a slightly more people um, and uh, slightly more bandwidth. Uh, so we expect uh, your experiments to be a little bit more in depth, depending on how many people there are involved. So for Evan, of course, uh, as a single person, your project needs to be very small, but for, um, the other group, uh, you guys have a couple more members, right? Let's see. Um, I think we said here, you guys have um, Steven, Axel, Joel, uh, Guan Hao, and-, and uh, Yeah, from oh, the that's the wrong one. Okay, yeah, group seven. Uh, Afrin, uh, Shong An, and Peng Tai, right? The three of you in one group. So yeah, um, yeah. So you should have a medium-sized project and and be able to very clearly de delineate um, what things each of you are are doing for this. Okay. So um, I hope in your um, project log um, that you can also try to put columns in for each of you. Okay. Um, not not for this one, but for the upcoming one. So I'll, I'll detail that later, so that it's clear that you spent um, the right amount of time doing the, the projects, okay? Um, let me ask group seven, did Evan give you uh, useful feedback on how to constrain your project and how, uh, how you're doing on the ideation? Yeah, uh, I think you're on the right track as well. Okay, that's great. Okay, so uh, if, if that's all good, uh, I'll let uh, all of you guys uh, that are in the main room go because uh, you guys are finished for today. Um, we will have a class again next Friday. So um, that's after Chinese New Year, the first week after Chinese New Year. Uh, and then we'll again have a, another uh, project consultation the following Thursday after that. Okay, so um, that's all for today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, you. Uh, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Prof. Okay, yeah, take care. Have a great holiday.
Hey guys. Did you guys have a good conversation? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what's going to happen uh, from now, uh, once the other room is uh, back out, um, yeah. is that uh, we will have class again next week. So uh, if you're a part of the presenting or scribe group, you uh, will see the messages there, okay, to uh, get started on that. But the following week when we go to our project consultation will be pretty similar to this one, okay? But it'll be one difference is that uh, one of the groups, the 6101 group, the PhD student group, one of those groups is actually from the first half of the semester. That means they need to finish their project by week eight, okay? So we're going to let them update everyone about how their project is going. They've actually finished uh, most of their preparation and have already started doing their modeling, okay? So they should be quite far ahead of most of you. Most of you probably have just started looking at the papers, et cetera, and maybe downloading code. Okay, so uh, we're going to listen to their update first, and then I'd like all of you guys to reflect on how um, that will play it on in your own projects. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do is for the next iteration, so I want you to specialize your project log a little bit, especially for all of the uh, DYC members, because you have multiple members of the team. Uh, we need you to fairly allocate your responsibilities, okay? So it's perfectly fine if uh, some weeks some of you are too busy and other weeks, uh, uh, you know, there are other people doing the most of the load, but uh, it's going to be that you need to uh, break up the columns, okay, in your progress log such that uh, each person has their own column, okay? And then you can uh, detail uh, what you're doing, okay? It can be striped over multiple slides. It's also fine, okay? Um, so, uh, so the process will be like this. We'll listen to their presentation from the 6101 group from the uh, first half. Then we're gonna do breakout rooms again, but you'll be with different team members next time, okay? And we'll do this for two iterations, meaning uh, it's likely that we'll try to put uh, uh, free groups in one room, okay? And then you'll round robin present to each other, okay? So that uh, we can all uh, hear at least two different groups and give some critiques for each one, okay? So um, that's what we're going to do uh, going forward. Um, do any of you have any questions about how, how things went or you have any uh, worries or concerns? I want to make sure that uh, you get a good experience out of doing your project because especially for our DYC students, that is the bulk of time that they're spending on, on this course. So Yi Song, uh, Taka, Clarence, uh, Chen Chin. Xin. Uh, hi, Prof. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have. We like to ask you about something. So, I think for my our team, uh, we have sort of found two different papers that we are hoping to replicate. Uh, both of them are under in the area of recommendation system. So, but one is one has the use of NLP, and the other is basically a. Uh, not so much of it using just uh, collaborative filtering. So I thought we wanted to ask is, uh, do, is it possible if we start with the one without NLP first and eventually extend it to the NLP implementation or should we go directly to the NLP project straight away? Okay. Uh, you are sitting nicely in the divide where it's hard to decide because you have four members in your group. So there's actually enough bandwidth, depending on how much time you want to spend up front uh, to do the NLP project already, okay? Like if you want to front load most of your work on the project, then you can assign two people to the RS part, two people to the NLP part, and you'd be good to go there. If you feel like uh, you want to stripe out all of your work um, so that it's um, you know continuous rather than front loaded, then I would say go with the recommendation only part first, okay? And after you finish that, if there's an easy way to integrate NLP, um, the, the second paper or parts of it into the framework that's introduced by the first paper, again, not knowing which papers you've chosen yet, uh, I'll take a look at that later, um, then I would say maybe that would be the way to go. 
Okay, so it is uh, somewhat um, uh, maybe preferable to think about the load that uh, your team has with respect to other projects that you're doing, especially because you have Shashank who's a external member. Um, it may be uh, important to integrate well uh, so that you have three NUS students and one external member um, contributing uh, in, in a helpful uh, uh, manner because, you know, because uh, the expectations from undergraduates and expectations from uh, guest students are going to be different. Of course, Shashank was a previous FYP student in, in my group, so he's uh, uh, quite familiar with the NUS system. Does that answer your question? Yep, thanks, Prof. Okay, great. And uh, for Axel and uh, Joel and Guan Hao's group, um, did you guys uh, get uh, enough uh, Coordination, have you guys had a meeting? And um, I think there was one concern about one of your team members, Adit, did he respond to you? Oh, uh, yeah, I messaged him, he, he hasn't responded to me. And I guess maybe he, he, I'm not sure, maybe he accidentally put the group 10 or maybe he wasn't aware that we already had a group or something. Yeah, but he hasn't responded to me, la. yeah. Okay, so uh, later I'll, I'll check with him about how things are going and whether he intends to be part of a group. And uh, if he doesn't intend to be a part of your group, then uh, it needs to be very clear what role he's playing. So uh, I think uh, Wendy Ren is also part of your group. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so she's an external member from what I understand from Yi Song. Is that right, Yi Song? Yes, okay. So um, yeah, uh, I, again, like I've said for uh, the other group with uh, both NUS students and external members, this can be a really helpful uh, uh, opportunity to work with people outside. I mean, I think she's maybe even from a different time zone. So um, uh, it's a, a chance to open doors and get connected with other people, but it's also a challenge. So it's actually very important and critical at the beginning to have a couple meetings face to face, even though it may not be at a, a very nice timing for um, all of you, okay? So uh, once you have those uh, niceties uh, and, and you feel comfortable interacting with each other, then uh, it's, it's perfectly fine if you do things asynchronously. Okay. The key part, uh, I think, on large group projects is to have a very clear assignment of roles and to have somebody take the responsibility of being the manager. And the manager, of course, needs to be able to delegate and actually not do too much on their own. So they need to have uh, minimal responsibility. So um, in your case, you need to make sure uh, for group 10, who is the one coordinating all of the work and making sure that um, things are on even keel. Okay, and so that also means that you need to make the project small enough so that you can enlarge it later. There's almost always plenty of ways you can extend the project. Okay, and um, if you have enough team members, it's easy to do that because you can say, oh, this looks like an interesting angle. I'm going to assign team member one to look at that. And, you know, team member two can look at another angle. Okay. Uh, and so the other thing that I'll, I'll say is that you want to work from the end in mind. So uh, think about the eventual product that you want to see at the end of the semester in week 13. You guys are gonna be all presenting one poster, okay? Uh, perhaps a software demonstration that you have on a, a laptop or a cloud server, okay? And uh, what, what do you want to show from that, okay? So you're gonna replicate a paper, maybe extend it, maybe do some analysis work, okay? So I was talking with um, the other group, uh, the 6101 group that's finishing in week eight. I said, you know, you want to go through and try to identify specific data examples, okay? That you want to use on your poster, okay? Like you see in all of these papers, you, they typically start off with one example, like uh, pretend this item needs to be recommended and we have a new user, or pretend I have this dialogue, okay, whatever. Okay, and I, I'm gonna use that as an example for how my system works, okay? So try at the beginning now to already start to search your data sets and try to find examples of which you think are going to be um, useful uh, to illustrate the concept that's in your paper or in the idea that you want to put forward, okay? Uh, other questions that you guys have? Okay, 
Uh, so I, I promise you it will be a short session. It's exactly two o'clock now. So we're going to stop here. Um, what you will see from me over the next couple of days are comments on your slide deck. Okay, so I will go through each of the slide decks and try to make some comments as I did for the other 6101 group, which I talked to. So all of this is public. So um, you, you can also spend some time or one group member to go look at other people's projects and the comments on their projects, okay? Because it helps to, to level up as a cohort to know what other projects are doing. Look at the comments that are made on those projects. Okay, so if you talk to your project uh, opposite today, uh, if you can help to make your comments as actual comments on Slack, as well as the ones that you said verbally, that can help too, because we all have pretty bad recollections of things, right? So it's good to write it down um, and then uh, revisit that later, okay? All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if there are no further questions, Thank you for attending. Have a great, happy new year. And let's hope the next year is a much brighter one than uh, the last one. At least we kicked out Don, 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 Donald Trump. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you. See you, Thanks, everyone. Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you.